But let me know in the chat who he is to you. He is a savior. Savior. He is my savior. Who is to you? Savior. Oh, the boy you saved. He has come to worship you. Oh, the boy you saved has come to worship you. Oh, the boy you saved, he has come to worship you. Oh, the boy you saved has come to worship you. Maybe you were sick and this man healed you. And so for those of us whom he has healed, we call him our healer. We call you healer. healer. You are a healer. Oh, he, you are the healer. The boy you healed, he has come to worship you. Oh, the boy you healed, he has come to worship you or oh, put yourself there the girl you healed she has come to worship you you are the healer the boy you healed has come to worship you the man you healed he has come to worship you, the man you hear. He has come to worship you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my Jesus. Oh, the price you paid is why I've come to worship you. Oh, the price you paid is why I've come to worship you. Oh, he paid the price, the price you paid is why I'm here to worship you oh my lord the price you paid is why i'm here to worship you so let me hear your testimony he is the same he is the savior you know in 2020 many things happened but he has been the same Hey, the, the born you and the one you saved, they are here to worship you. We are here to worship you. The born you spirit, he is here to worship you. The boy you rescued from death, he is here 
to worship you. Oh my Lord, the boy you rescued from the dead, he has come to worship you. I don't know why you have come to worship him, but for me, he has saved me. The boy he saved, he has come to worship you. Oh my Lord, the boy you heal, he is here to worship you. Oh my Savior. My Savior, you are the same, you are my Savior, oh, the lady you saved, she has come to worship you, oh my God. The lady you saved, she has come to worship you. The boy you saved, he has come to worship you. Oh my Lord, the boy you saved, he has come. To worship you. Oh yes. Why have you come to worship the Savior this day? I don't know. I don't know your reason. I don't know your reason. But this man has been awesome to us all. This man has been awesome. Oh Jesus. Hmm. Rani says, my family and I are here to worship you. Please pray for my stepmom. She's in a critical condition as a result of COVID-19. Oh, Jesus. Complications. I believe God can heal her. Yes, definitely. And that is why we are calling him the healer. Oh, he, Father, you are healer, healer. Oh, Father, you are the healer. The ones you are about to save, the ones you are healing, they will come and worship you. Oh, my Lord. Granny's mom, she will come and worship you because we know you are healing her oh my god the woman you are healing right now she will come and worship you we know she will be well the woman you are about to heal she will come with a bigger testimony than all of us we know oh lord you are healing her Therefore, woman, wherever you are, the word of God is coming to you this morning. That receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Because we know that in the stripes of Jesus, by those stripes, we are healed. And those stripes, they speak better things than the blood of Abel. Therefore, COVID-19, all is subject to the power that is in the name of this risen king we know that at the mention of the name jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that indeed our jesus he is lord therefore this morning as we proclaim the name of jesus oh we know that healing is visiting you in your hospital bed I understand that there is oxygen on you, but the creator of that oxygen is giving you more. Oh, Lord Jesus, you are a healer. You are her healer, and I know that you are coming through for her. And I know that all those who are watching me, who may have been having different challenges or difficulties, 
you the God, oh, who is the great I am, I know you are bringing them all through it. Yes, we know it has been challenging, but with you, oh Jesus, in our boat, we know that we are smiling at the storm, the storm of coronavirus, the storm of unemployment, the storm, whichever storm of broken marriages, the storm of broken hopes and broken families, oh, they are all coming down because we know we have you, Jesus, in our boat. And because of that, we are going to smile at the storm. And so this morning, we are smiling at every storm, knowing that you, our God, are able to bring us through. We thank you that you are our healer. We thank you that you are our Father. We give you glory, Lord Jesus, this morning. And we ask that your presence all will be made manifest in our lives wherever we find ourselves oh lord lord may we know that indeed you are the resurrected king and the one and only king the one that we proclaim father this morning set me aside and bring your word to your people father bring your hope to those who have been lost we know that you are our god and you are god alone we give you glory for a new thing and a new day in Jesus' name. Oh, we give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Oh, by his stripes we are healed. By his stripes we are healed. If you are watching me this morning, I don't know the difficulties that you have been going through or you are currently going through, but this is why we have a God. He says that all his thoughts are higher than our thoughts and so are his ways and we know that in all things they are working out for our good our god will never bring us to shame therefore as we continue to share the stream as we continue to invite people uh, to hear the word of god this day the word god has given to me to bring to you I've titled it, Behold, I do a new thing. Behold, I do a new thing. You know, there have been so many things we have gone through, even in 2020. But we are in 2021. And God says, I should tell you that he will do a new thing. Our scripture for today is from the prophet Isaiah's book. Isaiah chapter 43 and we will read from the verses 16 all the way to 21. Isaiah 43 verses 16 to 21. Now I read. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together, they shall not rise. They are extinguished, they are quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? it will even, I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beast of the field will honor me the jackals and the ostriches because i give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people my chosen this people i have formed for myself they shall declare my praise this people i have formed for myself and they will declare my praise now this morning when we look at the verses 16 and 17 the lord is saying that um that says the lord who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters who brings forth the chariot and the horse the army and the power he was speaking to the israelites you know they were in captivity in egypt and the lord brought them out and when god brought them out he did these mighty things for them he made a way in the sea. I remember one meme I saw with some fish 
um, that was being as why it had delayed and it said that oh the, the the waters had been parted so until the israelites could cross it did not have the chance to cross it, it was a funny meme but the lord did these things for the israelites and that is what he was reminding them who he has been to them you know for many of us i remember how uh when we got ushered into this new 2021 people were um so busily rejoicing and some people were even hooting at 2020 for all the troubles that it brought but you see the the, the issue is not more about the troubles but how god was able to deliver us how god was able to bring us out of all those troubles and all those difficulty you know you may have been through different scenarios you may be in some form of captivity or bondage i don't know it may even be captivity to sin but then the lord has brought you out of that and so your your testimony your testimony about god determines the relationship that you have with him that is why this morning we were singing the song he is the savior if god has saved you he is a savior if god has healed you he is a healer people know him for different reasons but this day i don't know your testimony about god but i want to hear that who is god to you what has he done for you who has he been to you because that is supposed to be your testimony if you know that god can save oh you will not run to anybody you will not run anywhere for salvation because you know that he has saved you if you know that this god is able to speak peace in your life you will always look up to him for your peace if you know that this god has healed you you will continue to rely on him for your healing so your testimony about God determines the relationship you have with him. So that is why Paul said that those that do not know our God, the message of the gospel is foolishness unto them who have not believed because these people do not have any relationship with him they, because they do not have any testimony. They, they, they are refusing to have a testimony about this savior. But that's why God is reminding the people of Israel that he is the one that brought them out of captivity through the sea and all the way through the wilderness. He was there for them. So what is your testimony? What is your testimony this day? What has the Lord done for you that you can relate? 2020 was tough. But I fail to believe that throughout that year, the Lord did not do anything for you. Through 2020, irrespective of the difficulty, lockdowns, job losses, and all that, I believe that through it all, God has been good to you. And you should have a testimony because that testimony you have about this uh, God is going to determine your relationship with Him. You see, if 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 you were given a pen and you, you you were shown that this pen is able to write whenever you pick a pen you will use it to write because that is what you know that is your testimony about that pen but if that pen was given to you oh and and you were just to empty the content and use it as a die whenever you get a pen instead of using it to write you will empty the content and use it as a die because that is your testimony what is your testimony i need you to reflect think of how or where you are that the lord has brought you thus far and have that testimony that commonality you see when you enter a worship service and people are singing, usually when, when I'm in a worship service, I tell the people that, you know, my song is not your song because who God is to me might be different from who God is to you. 
the testimony I have, the reason why I sing might be different from why you are singing. And so you have to relate and connect with this God on a much deeper level than you, 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 you see. So what is your testimony this morning? Leave it in the comments. Let someone be blessed. Who is God to you? Is he a healer? Is he a provider? Is he a savior like he is to some of us? Or oh, who is he to you? Now, after God has told them about who he is, reminded them of where he brought them from, now he tells them in the verse 18 that do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. You see, when you read other versions, other versions will say that do not dwell on the things of old. I'll tell you something. I don't know where you were or even where you are. You can't be the worst sinner. But once you encounter this our God, everything turns around. Everything turns around. So do not dwell so much on the past. Do not dwell so much on who you have been, where you have been, the difficulties that you have been through. But look to a future ahead, a bright future ahead. That is the most important thing. God is telling his people that do not dwell on the past things. You see, I once heard uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes make this profound statement that the reason why the rear view mirror is smaller, but we have a very huge windshield is because of the fact that the past, what you have passed is not as important as what is ahead of you. What you just went by is not as important as what lies ahead of you. You see, the more you dwell on the past, if you were driving and your focus is in the rear view mirror, you would definitely crash. You won't make it to your destination because your past is not ahead of you. It is behind you and you have passed that. So look through the windshield, which is the bigger screen and see the things that are ahead because those are the most important things for the glories of the latter shall be greater than the former. That is what the word of God tells us. Now, for some of us also, we are worshiping God in our past. We are always talking about the good old days. Oh, God, those days when, when we were doing this, when we were doing this, when we were doing that. Yes, it is all good. But you see, the past is not so much of the point, but the future. You know, people like Solomon, they started very well with God, but they did not end well. So your past, dwelling on your past glory is not the point, but looking to the things that are ahead. Looking to the things that are ahead. Paul said that forgetting the past, forgetting the past. You see, if you don't forget the past, you can't appreciate the future if you if you don't move past and there are so many people who are living in their past they are they are living in their past some people cannot forgive themselves because of something they have done in the past but god says that if any man be in christ he is a new creation all things have passed away behold all things have become new and therefore, you need to look beyond all those things that are in the rear view mirror. Be, look beyond them. You cannot be staring at the rear view mirror. And for those of us who have also done wonderful things, have wonderful relationship with God, it is so good. But remove your focus from the rear view mirror and look at the relationship that God wants to have with you. Because our work with God is a daily affair. Now he's telling these people, now see, after telling them all the wonderful things he has done for them, 
through the wilderness, through the sea, and, and being able to defeat all those um, enemies for them, the soldiers and all that. He says that do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. You see, our relationship with God is 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 new it, it is new every day it is new every day that is the relationship we, we have with god every day when you sleep and you wake up it is time to have a fresh relationship we call it fresh start so you cannot be dwelling on the past oh those days when we were we were praying for people to be healed when we we're going out to evangelize what are you doing now it is the now and the future that matters because irrespective of all that you may have done in your past, if you are not careful, you might be glorifying yourself in the past things that you forget to maintain a relationship with our kin in the coming years. So do not let the past either be a hindrance or a limitation to you. You always need to look forward, look ahead to this beautiful relationship. Oh, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His faithfulness shall not come to an end, for they are new every morning. His faithfulness is new every morning. And so that is why he's saying not to dwell on the past because he knows that his faithfulness is new every morning. And so every day is an opportunity for God to be God in your life. And if you will forget about the things of the past or not dwell so much on them and look at the present and the future, you will be able to see that new thing that God is doing for you, through you, with you. And so let's not look or dwell so much on the things in the past now he goes ahead to say that shall you not know it shall you not know it why won't you know it because you are still living in the past you are still tormented about how coronavirus happened and how you lost your job how uh, you lost a loved one or how something happened and because of that you are not seeing the brightness that the day is bringing for though weeping may endure for a night old oh, joy comes in the morning the word of god is so refreshing and 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 this this relationship that we have with him it is a living relationship and now he's saying that, oh, I will even make a road in the wilderness. Some of us, we have read the scripture and we've had wilderness, wilderness, wilderness. But perhaps you have not really sat down to consider what a wilderness is. So I just checked, what is a wilderness? And I realized that a wilderness is like an uninhabited land in its wild form now initially when i when i was thinking about the word wilderness i, I was like I, I had not imagined how it was when the lord had to lead his people through it but the wilderness is the place of the wild it is the wild forest that wild virgin forest that thick place that nobody has been and we know what happens there there are so many dangerous animals there are so many predators in there there are so many difficult things in the wilderness even trying to forge your own path in the wilderness is difficult because you have trees you have creeping plants crossing everywhere that is life in the wilderness the wilderness is difficult because everything is wild there are poisonous trees poisonous snakes, poisonous animals, scorpions, and all manner of things. And God is saying that in verse 19, I will even make a road in the wilderness. 2020 was tough on all of us, but come to think of it, if it is or if it was a wilderness, then God 
made a road for us. God made a road for us. And here he is saying that I will. Oh, I love future tenses. I will. So maybe you are living in a wilderness. You are in the wilderness. You are stranded. Because in the wilderness, there are no paths. You see, when, when you are in the city, you, you know, there are so many roads you can use. And sometimes you are even confused which road to use and all that. But in the wilderness, there is no road. You have to just maneuver your way out. Maybe that is where you find yourself. Maybe you are in your wilderness right now. But God says, I should tell you that he will. He will. Oh, make a road in that wilderness that you are finding yourself. Whatever. You know, in their time, it was a physical wilderness. But in our time, it could be anything. It could be some difficult situation. You, you may be dealing with some addiction or some sin. You may be dealing with some problems, uh, some afflictions. But if that is your wilderness, God says, I should tell you that he is going to make a road. He is going to make a road in the wilderness. And he says, and rivers, rivers rivers in the desert oh i don't know if you know what a desert is uh, the the new king james version says desert other versions i think the esv calls it a wasteland but whichever way it is let's even use a desert analogy if you know what a desert is then you would know what it means for there to be a river in that desert maybe you are in the desert all you can see ahead of you is sand you know it's so beautiful how when we are entering into a new year and we go to church all these wonderful resolutions and prophetic words and all that you may have received a prophetic word even personally but when you look ahead of you all you can see is sand you don't see anything all you see is sand and the winds blowing that sand but the lord is saying that he will make a river oh you did not hear that he says he will make a river in that desert that you find yourself only keep your eyes on him only keep your eyes on him only keep your eyes on this god so when you even want to look at it from the wasteland i don't know which version of the bible you are using if it is a, a, a wasteland a wasteland is, is like a forbidden like a useless piece of place um, or area a place of no regard Maybe that is your life right now. You are probably the underdog. You are the stone that all the builders have rejected. They have been doing the selection and each one of those selections passes you by. They have not acknowledged or recognized your importance. Maybe that's where you find yourself. Even in your family, you are the odd one out. You see, in your friends, you are the odd one. You are always the one being labeled. Oh, but God is saying that he is breathing a new breath of freshness, a river, a stream in those wastelands. That the stone that the builders rejected will become the chief cornerstone in this day. If you will, you will focus on this, our God. And remove your focus from all other things. You see, when Jesus, uh, 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 Peter was in the boat with the other disciples and they encountered Jesus on the waters and he asked, Lord, if it is you, ask me to come. And Jesus said, it is me, come. Oh, Peter was able to take a step and another and another. But the moment he began to take his focus of the man who has called him, 
when he began to look at the storms, then he became afraid and began to sink. If you are going to lift up your eyes and focus on this Jesus, this resurrected Jesus, oh, I know if you are making him your focus and not looking at the sand you are seeing and not seeing all the waste that you find around and not seeing all the discrimination, the pain, the hurt, the suffering and all that you are going through, he is going to bring a river, a river. You know, there was this uh, prophetic word that came. You know, when um, people were thinking that in, in, in oh, now we have entered 2021 and oh, all the drama in 2020 are over. Um, well, they are over, but they are over for the people who know their God. It is for the people who know their God. Because believe you me, not even me, but the word of God, that we are living in the times, in difficult times. And so, and as much as I, I hate to disappoint people, do not count that 2021 is the year that is bringing you something. No, that is a mistake. But it is rather God is bringing you something. Because the year has nothing to offer you. Your hope, if your hope is that 2021, you have entered 2021, and that the year is going to bring you something, you are deceiving yourself. Because it is God who will bring you something. And this God does not care whether it is 2020, 2021, 2022, whichever year. It can be the year of famine, but the Lord will give you plenty. Was it not this God who was able to send ravens to send food to Elijah? Ravens. God sent them with food. To Elijah when there was no food. So our focus should not be in what the year brings. The year can bring the worst of things but for those of us who know our God, oh, if you know your God, you know that it is not about the year and what it brings but it is about our God and what he brings. So the year does not matter. We could be living in 2030 for all I care. But what I know is that I serve a God. I serve a God. Oh, who has assured me that he would never leave me, not forsake me. I serve a God who has given me this assurance in Christ Jesus. And I think that should be the focus. And so those who thought that by entering 2021, was an escape from the turmoil that was in 2020. No, 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 no. 2021 is not the escape. It is God, God, God. God is the escape. Don't focus on the year. 2020, it was just a year. It was like every other day when we had problems. And 2021 is like any other day. So don't think that because you entered 2021, COVID-19 is gone uh, because we entered 2021, unemployment has ceased because we entered 2021, travel restrictions and all those uh, what have you and have nots, they are all over. They are not necessarily, but if you have rather entered into koinonia with our God, a fellowship, a relationship with our God, that you are renewing and nurturing every day and every morning, then you should understand that if even 2021 becomes the desert, if even 2021 becomes the wasteland, if even 2021 turns itself into the wilderness, even wilder than 2020, 
Oh, for those of us who are in Christ Jesus, we know that even that is working for our favor because he says that all things work together for good for those who are. For those of us. So if even 2021 becomes the wilderness, all things will work for our good. And this is the assurance that we have in this God, that he will, he will. The war with COVID-19 is not over, but we know that God is with us and he will bring us out because he, we are called according to his purpose and because we love him. It is not because we entered 2021. It's not because 2021 happened. 2021 has no power to do anything. But it is God, only God, who has the power and the ability to bring us through all the troubles that we may have gone through. And so he said, I'll be wrapping up soon. The beast of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. You see, if, if you've been in the wilderness, sometimes you, you, you see some people and they are so committed to the things of God and you don't understand. You don't know their story. You don't know the wilderness in which they were and the Lord has brought them out. Oh, the, 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 the the musician said that when I remember what the Lord has done, I will never go back anymore. This is the testimony of people who have been in the wilderness. Sometimes you, you, your praise is limited and you are taking things for granted because perhaps you have not been in the wilderness before. And that's the reason why God had to bring the children of God, Israel through the wilderness so that they will know who he is. Because even the jackals, the wild animals and the beasts, they honor God because he provides for them in the wilderness. They know the life in the wilderness. If you have been in the wilderness, you will know how the life there is and you will honor God for who he is and for how he has been able to sustain you in that wilderness. Sometimes the goal is not just to bring you out, but to sustain you in that wilderness so that you will know that indeed he is God. And this is what God is telling us, that behold, I do a new thing. He does a new thing every day in our wilderness. Oh, the wilderness is good, people of God. Say it, that the wilderness is good. The wilderness is good because it is the place where we find our praise. The wilderness is good because it is the place where we find our praise. Oh, if you were not sick for God to heal you, how would you know he was a healer? Oh, if you did not go hungry that he fed you, how would you know Ah, that he is the provider? If you were not a widow and he embraced you, how would you know that he embraces the widows? If you were not an orphan and this man adopted you, how will you know that he is the father of the fatherless? If you were not a sinner, and for this man to save you, how would you know that he saves? How would you know that he saves? So the wilderness is the place where we find our praise. The wilderness is the place where we find our praise. So I want you to put in the chat that I am finding my praise in the wilderness. I am finding my praise in the wilderness. No matter the storm that will come your way, no matter the difficulties, the challenges, the wasteland, the desert, the wilderness, you will find your praise. And you know why I know that? Because God says, behold, I do a new thing. Behold, I do a new thing. And because of that, we'll have a much reason, a bigger reason to celebrate our God. You know, he called us that we will proclaim his praise. That's what he said. Oh, these people have formed for myself that they shall declare my praise. Oh, 
That is why you are in the wilderness. The wilderness is for you to declare the praise of God. Last Sunday at church and Bible studies, people were asking so many questions. Oh, if there was God, why are there terrible things happening? And, and all those, why do innocent children die? And all those things. But all those things are wilderness. Oh, they are wilderness. Uh, his thoughts are not ours. Neither are his ways ours. And so in that wilderness, that is when we know who God is. Do you know why you don't want to even believe in God? It is because you are so comfortable. You haven't been to the wilderness before. Someone once asked me, why is it that a lot of the Africans I have met, uh, they, they all are, are very devoted. They, they, they love the things of God. They know the things of God. And I laughed. And I said, well, if you have been where we have been, <laughs> if you have been where we have been, oh, you will know that there is a God. But because people have become so comfortable, they haven't been to the wilderness before. And so it looks as if all they have is the fruitfulness that the land brings. But if you have been to the wilderness, if you have been to the place where we have been, oh, nobody will come and deceive you with all those things they have been saying. Because it is only a fool who says there is no God. And foolishness means a person who lacks understanding. If you have not been to the place where we found our praise, where we found who God is, you will sit down and not know who he is. But for those of us who know where the Lord has brought us from, where he is taking us, oh Jesus, you can say whatever you like from your study of the nature and anything else. But to us, he will forever remain, oh our God. Oh, let me just take some of your comments. Let me take some of your comments. Let me take some of your comments. Um, I'm getting out of my past and I'm focusing on the present and the future. The past is not so much of a point than the future. Yes, 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 yes. What you just passed is not as important. His faithfulness is new every morning. Second Corinthians 5.17, Grace Ham. Yes, if a man be in Christ, oh, Naomi Tete. Uh, God bless you. God bless you, Naomi, for being around this morning. Great revelation, wilderness. God bless you, man of God. God bless you, child of God. Um, all of you watching, we have an awesome God, God of impossibilities. Yes, we have a God who makes even the impossible possible. That is what makes him God, Naomi. Um, my God will make a river in my desert. Yes, definitely. Oh, God will make a river in the wasteland. He will, he will, he will. This is the message I need for 2021, so timely. Oh, we bless God, we bless God, we bless God. Very, very timely. Um, let me see, my hope is built on Jesus and no one else. That is very important. Every other land is sinking sand, people of God. It is not 2021, it is not 2021 at all, like I said. It is about God. 2021 has nothing to offer but God. Oh, remember, he's never late. He knows when we need him. Wow, powerful. Um, all about our God and nothing else. Um, when I remember what the Lord has done in my life, I will never go back anymore. Yes, I will go honor God even in the wilderness. The wilderness is the place. Oh, we find our praise. The wilderness is the place where we find our praise. I am in my wilderness. Oh, my God. Father, I say a word for your children who are in their wilderness right now. If you are in your wilderness, the word of God is coming to you. That God is going to do a new thing. He is making a way in that very wilderness. You see, he is not taking you out of the wilderness, but he is making a way for you in that very wilderness so that all eyes will see. And everybody who sees will know that indeed this is the doing of God. 
God does not want to share his praise with anybody. And that is why he will take you to the wilderness to prove to you and everybody else that is watching that indeed he is God. But there is one thing I want to admonish all of us. Like the donkey or the colt that was untied for Jesus to ride on to Jerusalem. When we get to Jerusalem, please let us not get comfortable or cocky and think that the hosannas and the palm branches and, 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 and everything that is being laid on the ground is for us. No, 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 no. Those are for the Savior because the Savior is riding us. That is why everybody is singing Hosanna. That is why everybody is singing praise. It is not because of us. We are only privileged to be trampling over those garments, over those leaves, because the Savior is riding on us. If Jesus was not sitting on that donkey, oh, I tell you, nobody would have gone to sing any Hosanna. And so when God makes a way for you in the wilderness, in this year in whatever year which day which month that you find yourself do not get cocky don't think that oh yes yes i went through all difficulties and i've been able to come out self-made billionaire self-made that oh jesus god have mercy on you because that wilderness that god gave you the praise it is for his glory that we will praise him and only him. So don't get cocky. Yes. All right. So thank you so much. I, I see so many of you commenting and God bless you for joining us um, this morning. I believe that you have been blessed this day. Um, if you have not followed FBN, please do so. Uh, share and make sure that you join FBN. I know there are awesome men of God that use this platform to propagate the word of God. And I believe that you continue to be a blessing. So don't let it be just today. Continue coming back, follow, and make sure that you, 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 are, you are getting notified whenever FBN goes live so that you can join all the awesome uh, programs that go on here. It is just about the word of God. And everything we do here is to, is to increase our faith and, and to enrich our walk with God. God bless you so much, somebody. But I will not leave without giving you the opportunity to walk to Jesus if you don't know him. This God that we are talking about. If you don't know him, if you don't have a relationship with him, maybe you know him, maybe you used to, maybe in the past, or oh, you have some past glories, but now you are not sure about the relationship you have with him. I want to have the honor of leading you to this God. And so if you are one of these people, if you want to know this God, if you want to have a relationship with him, or if you want to rededicate your life to him, I want you to say this after me. Lord Jesus, I am so grateful that you came to die for me this day. I accept you as my Lord and my personal Savior. Come live in me. Come dwell in me. Lord, I yearn to have a relationship with you. Come and lead me this day and the days of my life, Lord. I ask you that you continue to be my Lord and my Savior. The Lord in whom I can trust. Lord, I thank you for saving me. And I thank you for giving me this opportunity to walk with you. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have said this prayer, I know that God has accepted you irrespective of whatever you have done in your past. Look to the future that is ahead of you. And you are not uh, a believer. You don't have a place of worship. Look for a good church, a Bible-believing church and join them wherever you are and uh, even now by grace of god you can find so many just uh google churches near me you'll be able to find something good in your locality join them and have fellowship with god 
Now, Father, we thank you for this opportunity to hear your word and to hear from you. We give you glory that you are doing a new thing in us. Lord, I lift up all our listeners, all our viewers to you this day and this year. Father, we pray and we ask that even as we do not know what lies ahead, even as we do not know the wilderness that is ahead, you, O oh God, knows. And so we ask that you will bring them all through it. Father, we pray that you will do a new thing in each and everybody's life. Lord, I don't know what people are trusting you for, but those that are trusting in you for different things, anybody who is crying out to you that Jesus, son of David, like the, the blind Bartimaeus did, Lord, I pray that you meet them at the point of their need. For anything that people are crying unto you, those that need hope, those that need some reassurances, those that need many, many different things, Lord, I pray and I ask that you will come through for them. Lord, let your glory be made manifest. And most importantly, may you continue to remind them that you love them and you want to have a relationship with you. Lord, continue to keep us at your side and hold us by the hand that will not fall to the left nor to the right, but will continue to fix our eyes on you and you alone. Lord, we give you glory for a glorious day in Jesus' name. God bless you so much for joining us this day and we will come your way again uh, in the course of the week. Stay blessed and have an amazing year and day. We worship you, Jesus. We adore you, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. We worship you, God. We worship you, Jesus. Begin to speak in the language of the Spirit right now. The presence of God is here. Come on, just open up your heart and your mind and let the Spirit of God take over. Mako shehan dadabo shiha davadabasho. Mako diya vadabo shekata. He vadabo shihan dabadiya doshe. He vadono shanta nabadiye dadano sheda. Come on, let the heavens hear your voice. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. No one else but Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. We adore you. We worship you. We worship you. Reckless love of God Oh, it chases me down Find still I'm found Leaves the night in I And I couldn't help it I don't deserve it Still you gave yourself away Oh, the Reckless love of God There's no shadow he won't light up Mountain he won't climb up Hey, coming after me There's no war he won't kick down Lie he won't tear down Yeah, yeah.